Hello everyone, this is Frank with FJB Custom Woodcrafts and I welcome you back to the next video in this tutorial series on CNC woodworking for beginners. In last week's video we created a chosen cross and we used the techniques of node editing to separate the internal and external crown vectors. There are simpler methods of performing that task but I used node editing specifically to introduce the concept to my viewers and to teach them something about node editing. This week, I'm going to show you some simpler methods to perform the same task. But first, I'd like to delve into all of the Edit Objects tools. After that, you should be well on your way to understanding almost all of the tools in the drawing section of the software. For this video, I just created a 10 by 10 inch project and used the rectangle, circle, and polygon tools to create the vectors you see on the screen. I then use the offset tool to offset each of the vectors inward by a quarter of an inch and centered the project. Now the first three tools in the Edit Objects menu are tools you should all be familiar with. The first tool is the standard cursor, which is what we use to select objects. The second tool is the node editing tool. If you click it and then click one of the vectors, you'll be able to see all the nodes for the vector you clicked. Simply click outside of it to get out of the nodes and reselect the standard cursor. The next tool is the transform mode, which you're also aware of. Typically, we just click it once with the standard cursor and click it again to put it in transform mode. If we unselect it and then now select the tool and click any one of the vectors, it puts it into transform mode immediately. The next two tools are the group and ungroup vector tools. If you select vectors and you click the group tool, it'll group them. If you click the ungroup tool, it will ungroup them. We learned the group tool in the previous tutorial, but prior to that, we simply right click on the selected vectors and chose group objects. The keyboard shortcut for grouping objects is G. To ungroup grouped objects, we previously right clicked and chose ungroup objects and ungroup the vectors to either their original layers or the groups layer. When we use the ungroup selection tool, the vectors will by default be ungrouped to their original layers. The keyboard shortcut for this operation is U, but simple keyboard combinations allow us to quickly apply other ungrouping actions. Control plus U will ungroup the selected objects to the groups layer and any subgroups will remain grouped. Shift plus U will ungroup all selected objects to their original layers, including any objects in subgroups. Lastly, Control plus Shift plus U will ungroup all objects to their groups layer, including any objects in subgroups. The Measure Inspect tool allows you to determine precise measurements between two selected points, and precise information about individual spans of a vector in the 2D view. Spans are the individual segments of a 2D vector between two consecutive nodes. The next three tools allow you to weld, subtract, or overlap closed vectors respectively to replace the vectors acted upon by a new vector created by the tool. The Weld Vectors tool creates a vector which follows the outermost edges of all the selected vectors. If text vectors are welded, the tool will preserve any internal regions within the letters. When using the Subtract Vectors tool, the vector selected last is critical. The tool will remove any vector segments that overlap the last selected vector. The last vector selected is also critical when using the Overlap Vectors tool. This tool keeps only vector segments that are within the boundary of the last selected vector. The next two tools are used to trim vectors. But unlike the prior three tools, the trim tools can be used on both closed and open vectors. The interactive trim vector tool icon looks like scissors, 
and we used that tool extensively in the last video to isolate the inner and outer crown vectors. The tool will remove the segment of vector between the nearest two vector intersection points. If you check the box at the bottom of the tool panel, the software will automatically rejoin the trimmed sections when the panel is closed. Grouped vectors cannot be trimmed, so ungroup them first if you want to trim grouped vectors. The scissors icon will change from a closed to an open scissors when a vector you hover over can be trimmed with the tool. A useful and powerful tool that is often overlooked is the Trim Objects tool. It will trim all objects inside or outside a chosen boundary. First, select the objects you want to trim, followed lastly by the vector you want to trim against using the shift-click method of vector selection. Then, select an option to clear either the objects outside or inside the boundary. If you want the tool to refit the remaining objects to curves, select the Refit Curves After Clipping option. The next tool is a very important tool to know about, especially when using imported vectors that you didn't create yourself. The tool checks for any potential problems that may arise during the toolpath phase of project creation. Typical problematic vectors are those with overlapping contours and intersections. Simply click the vectors you want to check and click the tool. If you don't select any vectors, the tool will check all visible vectors on the current side of the current sheet on visible layers. Next, click Search All and the software will locate zero length spans, overlaps, and intersections, making it easy for you to locate potential problem areas. If any zero length spans are found, clicking Fix Zero Length Spans will automatically remove duplicate nodes. If the vectors you are checking will be used for a V-carve toolpath, check V-carving mode. Let's skip down to the Join Open Vectors tool. This is the other very important tool to know about as it will allow you to join any open vectors it detects by choosing an appropriate tolerance setting. The tool will close any open vectors whose endpoints lie within the tolerance selected. If the endpoints are farther apart than the tolerance selected, the vectors will remain open. Simply put, the larger the tolerance selected, the more possible open vectors will be closed. Any toolpaths requiring closed vectors for toolpath creation could lead to unexpected results if open vectors are used instead. So remember to use this tool along with the vector validator to check your vectors. The three tools located after the Join Open Vectors tool are tools that allow you to join two selected open vectors using three different methods of your choice. Number one, connect nearest endpoints with a straight line. Number two, connect nearest endpoints with a smooth curve. Or number three, by moving the nearest endpoints to the midpoint between them. Rather than using the Join Open Vectors tool to join open vectors, these tools allow you to join open vectors using the specific method of your choice. Let's now have a look at the Extend Vectors tool. With this tool, you can extend the end segments of an open vector or vectors and join them to a common point of intersection by left-clicking one segment to create a tangential extension line and then left-clicking another open segment whose tangential extension line will intersect with the first line. The Fit Curves to Vectors tool allows you to convert a selected vector to a curve using circular arcs, Bezier curves, or straight lines. The tool will then create a vector that closely approximates the original vectors. 
The tolerance value you choose determines how closely the new vector approximates the original vectors. A smaller tolerance will be more accurate, but closer accuracy is obtained at the expense of creating more data points, and more data points often result in a longer machining time. If you want to keep sharp corners, simply select the box and then choose the maximum angle value. What is this angle, you ask? If you imagine extending a tangential line from the endpoint of one of the spans that determines a sharp corner, the angle between the extended line and the other span that determines the corner is the angle of interest. If that angle is greater than the angle entered in the box, the corner sharpness will be retained. If not, the corner will be modified by a smooth curve within the tolerance set in the tolerance box. Lastly, you can choose whether to replace the currently selected vectors or keep them and place the newly created vectors on the currently selected layer. This tool is very useful when you want to convert an object with lots of nodes to a curve that will be smoother than the original vector and contain fewer data points so that the machined project will look better and machine faster. The Vector Boundary tool is a great way to easily create a profile vector for creating a profile toolpath for cutting out your project. Simply select the vectors you want to create a profile around, leave both boxes unchecked, and click Create. Checking the offset boundary box with distance zero will give you the same result. Experiment with this tool on your own to see how changing the settings affects the created vector boundary. The Edit Picture and Prop Bitmap tools are simple-to-use tools that allow you to easily perform tasks in the software and avoid having to use other software on these file types before bringing them into your Vectric software. The last tool allows you to interactively create radius corners called fillets at points where any two spans on a contour meet. Simply fill in the radius you desire, select the fillet type, and click the point where you want a fillet created. Typically normal fillets are used for design purposes, whereas dog bone and T-bone fillets are used on separate slotted pieces intended to be fit together after machining. For the latter case, T-bone fillets should be used when the slot width and tool are similar in size. Dog bone fillets should not be used when the slot width and tool are similar in size. I'm not going to go any further discussing fillet types in this tutorial, but if you're interested in quickly seeing how they are utilized, do an internet image search for these fillets and you'll quickly see how they are used in CNC projects requiring the fitting together of slotted parts. Before we wrap up, I promised I'd show you a much simpler method of creating the internal and external crown vectors in the last tutorial. After explaining all the Edit Objects tools, I'm sure you have a good idea of how it can be done, but let's look at it together. Open the Trim Objects tool and select the grouped crown vectors first and the cross vector second. If we now click the Clear Outside Boundary button and click Clear, we very quickly create the inner crown vector. Selecting the clear inside boundary option will alternatively create the external crown vector just as quickly. Wow! Forgive me for putting you through the node editing alternative previously, but there's just no substitute for learning a new skill than by actually forcing yourself to do it. I hope you enjoyed learning all the edit objects tools. Next time, we'll learn how to create vector textures using the vector texture tool and then toolpath that texture onto the flathead outfitter sign we learned how to make in the second and third videos in my CNC Woodworking for Beginners series. See you next time.